Welcome to Lord of the Vets, where I do the research so you don't have to. Don't talk to Dr. Google, you guys. Talk to a real one. So today, I'm going to talk to you about golden retriever dogs. Everything you need to know about owning a retriever and where to buy them. So let's get into it. Where do golden retrievers come from? They were bred in the 19th century in Scotland by crossing a flat-coated retriever and a tweed spaniel. Both are gun dogs. So why am I telling you about where they came from? It's actually important to know about the origin of the breed you're buying because it can help you to know about their personality, about their energy requirements, how much exercise they need. Because both of those dogs that they cross to make the golden retriever are working dogs. They're both gun dogs. So golden retrievers are high energy dogs. They need exercise. They need attention. They need to be played with. They need to be trained. This is a very important thing to know if you're gonna buy a golden retriever. So let's get into some stats. Mature females weigh between 25 and 32 kgs on average when they're fully grown. Males between 30 and 34 kgs. Their average lifespan is between 10 and 12 years. On some occasions, they'll live longer than that. How about their personality? Golden Retrievers are gentle, they're affectionate, they're loyal, they're intelligent, they're confident, and as I mentioned, they require a lot of exercise and stimulation. So let's talk about their health. Of course, as a vet, I care about health. What I did, guys, I've been doing some work. I did a survey. I asked about the five most common breeds. I got all the vets that graduated with me to rate them from one to five and give them a health score. The Golden Retriever, I got a 3.6. Now, some of you might be thinking, actually, that's not that great. But to be honest, in terms of pure breeds, it's not so bad. I'm, I mean, none of the pure breeds got over a four. If you want a perfect five, you might want to check out my video on mixed breed dogs because actually mixed breeds tend to have a better health bill than the pure breed dogs. What are some common diseases in golden retrievers? They can get joint issues, they can get hip and elbow problems. When I'm later talking about buying a puppy, I'll talk about hip scoring and I'll talk about elbow scoring. So let's talk about their skin. They tend to get a little bit of dandruff. It's not something you can treat, but it is something you can manage with shampoos and also being long-coated dogs. It does predispose them to some other skin issues like allergies and some types of skin infections. So you just need to be aware of their coat and manage their coat. With long haired dogs, there's a bit of care required to make sure they don't get any skin issues. So being floppy ear dogs, they can be a bit more prone to ear infections than dogs that have the sort of erect pinna. Let's talk about cancer and their heart. In terms of their heart, they too tend to be a bit predisposed to a condition called subaortic stenosis. I'm not trying to scare you guys, it is 0.3% in the general population, and then retrievers are slightly over that. So it's not a hugely common issue, but it's something just to be aware of in the back of your mind. So let's talk about cancer. Now, you're about to buy a puppy, and you're saying, why are you talking to me about cancer? I don't want to hear about cancer, I'm about to buy a puppy. It's just something to be aware of in the back of your mind as the puppy grows so you can catch things early. So golden retrievers are more predisposed than other dogs to mast cell tumors. Now these are a skin tumor, so it's really important that you're intermittently checking your dog for lumps and bumps. Another thing to be aware of is lymphomas. They can be quite hard to pick up, but you can check under their armpits and around the groin and in the throat to just feel if there's any unusual lumps there. Osteosarcomas are cancers of the bone. Now the way that they would present is the animal would become progressively lame on one of the legs and it would be, so it'd be slowly getting worse and worse. If your animal does get lame for any reason, it is important to take it to the vet early. One other cancer they're predisposed to is called hemangiosarcoma, which is cancer of the blood vessels. Now, their eyes, progressive retinal atrophy and retinal dysplasia are two conditions of the retina that golden retrievers are predisposed to. Now there's no treatment unfortunately for these conditions. The only thing you can do is if a dog starts to develop one of those conditions is start to prepare it for life without vision. So I'm gonna go into in a moment, but it's why it's really important that the dog you're buying from, the sire and the dam have had their eyes checked because it's a genetic condition and then you can know if their line is clear from these genetic issues. Another issue they can get in the eye 
is cataracts, and there is a surgical option for cataracts. One other disease they're predisposed to is hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid levels. You can look at the health history of their parents to see if there's any hypothyroidism in the line, because that too is a genetic issue. You're buying a puppy from a breeder. Some of you might have seen my video on buying a Labrador dog. So the tips I gave you on that video, they also apply to this video with the Golden Retrievers. It's really important that you buy from a breeder that you trust, that you like, that they are willing to work with you, that you can actually go physically to there ideally and see the conditions that the dogs are being bred in, that it's not some kind of puppy farm with stalls and fields and paddocks everywhere, that they're actually caring and they're loving breeders. A good sign that they're a good breeder is that they actually won't need to do a ton of marketing. They'll be known in the community and they'll actually have a waiting list for their puppies because they're so popular, they do such a great job, they have such great, healthy, good puppies and they've got records for those puppies. Something you're gonna to wanna to ask, do the parents have hip scoring? Because you're gonna to wanna to know that the parents have good hip scores. You don't wanna get a dog with bung hips. Ideally, the parents also will have had their eyes checked and you'll know that they'll have good eyes. Because as I mentioned before, those genetic conditions of the retina are very important things to avoid. Some other important points, meet the dam. And if you can, meet the sire too and check out the temperament. Do you like those dogs? Because your puppy's probably gonna grow up to be like those dogs. Check the siblings, check the puppies and the litters. When you stroke them, do they relax or do they act like they've never been touched before? Because a good breeder would have desensitized them to physical contact and they would have had physical contact before from people. How's the health of the litter? Do their eyes look okay? They should have plenty of energy, be squirming around, you know, of course, unless they're asleep, but if they're awake, they should be moving and not just sort of lethargic and not look very well. Another important point, the puppies should not be separated from their mum before seven weeks of age. This is really important for their socialization. Of course, after you get the puppy, you're gonna to wanna to keep socializing the puppy, but they shouldn't be separated from their litter before seven weeks or from their mother. So as I mentioned before, with the hips and the elbows, there should be health certificates showing that the health of the sire and the dam in terms of their hips and elbow is clear. You can go as far as looking at siblings and looking at grandparents too. A good breeder will have a pedigree surrounding their dog. And one way you can tell is you can see that the other dogs in the pedigree have titles in front of their names. So when you're buying a puppy, it's not a time to cut cost and to save money because they cost about between 1,000 and 3,000 on average. And if you go for a budget puppy, you're probably gonna pay later down the line with health issues or some other issues. Don't focus on the cost, focus on finding a really good breeder with the things I've mentioned taken into account. Good breeders care about contracts too. They'll give you a contract. They'll wanna protect the integrity of their line, of their pedigree, and there'll be a clause in the contract saying that you're not gonna breed from the puppy that you're gonna get. You're gonna get it spayed and neutered within a certain time frame. That's a sign that the breeder's invested in what they're doing. They may make an exception for some reason, but generally they're gonna do that. They're gonna have that clause in the contract. A good breeder will be willing to give you some materials on training the dog, on feeding the dog, about the breed of Golden Retrievers, and they'll be willing to stay in contact with you throughout your journey of owning your new puppy, and they're gonna be willing to help you along the way. These are some important points. Let's summarize what I said. Golden Retrievers, they're great all-round family dogs with good personalities. They do have some health conditions to be aware of. They're bred from crossing a flat-coated retriever and a spaniel, so they have a gun dog history and a lot of energy and need stimulation and need to be played with and to be trained. But they are beautiful dogs and I have to say, I absolutely love Golden Retrievers. And if you're thinking about buying a puppy, I wish you all the best. If you have any comments about buying a Golden Retriever dog, or maybe you already own a Golden Retriever dog, please comment below. I'm happy to answer your questions. I'm prepared to do some more breed breakdowns for you guys. Please comment below which other breeds want me to break down and I'll do it for you. If you're considering adopting a dog or buying a puppy, why not come and check out here in Jordan, in Aqaba, there's a dog shelter. It might sound a bit crazy, but you can fly here, you can come, you can see a dog. There's almost 500 stray dogs here that need a home and for the same price that you could buy a pure breed, you could get to Aqaba and they could help you with the paperwork and you could take a stray dog home with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Peace out.